October meeting of the Wasatch County Fire District. We have the entire council or board here today. Uh, first item on the agenda is the minutes for September 12th. Does everybody have an opportunity to look at them? Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the minutes for the uh, <coughs> September, is it September? Yeah, 12. September 12th meeting as written. We have a motion, do we have a second? Second. We have a second meeting. Um, Mr. Nelson? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Chairman, all in staying in the Okay. We're to let the record know that the council will be good at staying. Um, approval of the warrants for the total of $137,000. $137, $137,005.04. I've got the four cents in there. <laughs> we have a chance to review the warrants. That's the total of all the different things. All of them. I'll make the motion to approve it in that amount. We have a motion. Do we have a second? A second. We have a second with Councilman Peterson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Next item on the agenda is the Chief's discussion or report. I just going to uh, turn a little time over to Mary Duggan. She's our chairman of our uh, advisory board to report uh, meeting with them. And before she starts, I would just like to say that I appreciate the work that they've done. I mean, they put in a lot of time, and uh, I think they're, it's a great group of people, and it brought a lot to the table. So I'll turn some time over to her and let her report on what's cooking with the advisory board. Really nice to see the whole board here today. I think this is the first time that I've stood before everybody. Um, Chief asked me just to make a few comments about what's going on with us, and uh, so if, if you have questions at any time, please feel free to interrupt me because I don't have any prepared remarks. Um, the board started out, the advisory board I'm speaking when I say the board, um, started out thinking that we would meet once a month on a regular date. That hasn't happened. As you probably are aware, things come up, people are busy. So we're meeting, trying to meet every two weeks, and occasionally we've had to go a little bit longer. We're still trying to become educated about what our district does, how they feel about doing it, and where we need to be going. Um, the latest meeting uh, that we had, we had an extensive presentation from uh, EMS, Claire Provost. Mike Davis also attended and gave us a brief um, summary of what the situation is with the county. And of course, we're still trying to, as you probably are too, struggling with what should be done with EMS and fire. That cooperation seems to be working, but there are some deficiencies. And EMS made a plea that they're short-staffed. Their people are really stressed, that the same people keep responding, that they need some help. So that's where we're going to have to be going in the future. Now, what the structure looks like, how they operate together, that's still open to debate. We're waiting for the needs assessment. <coughs> and uh, the strategic plan hopefully will clarify. I mean, we all, at members of the board, the advisory board, have ideas. And some of us would like to go with the county. Some of us would like to stay um, independent. So we'll have to just kind of work that out and try to make a recommendation to this board so that you have if you're not clear, I was certainly not clear. I'm feeling much more comfortable about what we do and how we go about doing it. Um, <clears throat> the last meeting also, uh, we talked about a request for proposal for that needs assessment. And you'll recall that we asked you to approve uh, an, an increase in property tax so that we could afford that in the next year's budget. Uh, that RFP is just about ready to go. Um, I don't know. If We've received a draft of that yet or not? Our board, our board did receive a draft, and so the, I think there are going to be some comments from my advisory board, and I think the chief will take that on to uh, the engineer that's helping us put that together. 
make those changes if there are any. And then I guess to bring it back to you so that you can have a take a look, take a look at that and be comfortable with what we're trying to accomplish. Um, the experienced members of our advisory board think that when we, once we publish that, that we can get the submittals back within 30 days. That's pretty fast, I think. And so um, if that goes out at the end of October, we get them back by November. And <clears throat> one thing that I would recommend is that you allow the advisory board, or at least a portion, the more experienced members of our advisory board, to be the ones who actually score those submittals. Um, and then let us bring a recommendation to you about the rankings of the uh, applicants and what we think about that. So if, if you would put that in your thinking cap and, and uh, you know, perhaps give us authorization to do that, I'd appreciate that. Um, but I don't see that uh, we would be ready to go um, with rec making recommendation until after the first of the year when the new budget is in place. Um, we think a uh, time frame on actually once you've signed a contract that it will take six months approximately to get the information back. So once we have that needs assessment in hand and a strategic plan, then I think we can really start making recommendations about where we should go. In the meantime, <clears throat> we have uh, each of us on our advisory board have some areas that we're thinking about that we'd like to look at, you know, dig into just a little bit more. If you have anything that you're specifically interested in, please let me know so we can schedule that. I'm talking about things like training, staffing, budgeting, all of those kinds of things. Um, you know, some things maybe we haven't thought of ourselves. Uh, again, I don't think anyone of our board is really willing to make any recommendations until we get that strategic plan and needs assessment accomplished because anything that we might recommend at this point might be counter to what we end up doing in the long range. So we'll just kind of wait, wait with that. But we don't want to not do anything in the meantime. Yes? We do have our, our managers of our, our chief and our, they're attending those meetings to make their recommendations as well. They are. I'm, I'm assuming they are. that. I just wanted to make sure I'm they out are. here because those are the guys that are in the trenches every time. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. All of our folks. So. Uh, in fact, I'd like to even get uh, some input from the people on the line, you know, get their recommendations. Um, one thing, um, the, I thought the Fire 101 presentation, for those of you that didn't come, I thought that was fantastic. And if nothing else, um, I was impressed with what things cost. It's shocking. I had no idea. had no idea. But um, I'm told that to comply with OSHA and NF, or NPFA, NFPA, NFPA, those things, that's what they cost. And so, you know, that's where you're going. Um, everything is very expensive. Is there an expectation or a budget of how much this will cost? Uh, the experienced members of our group th thought it would be about 50000 to 65000 We're hoping for the lower end range. Well, was that for, that's just for the needs assessment, right? Not the strategic plan afterwards? No, it's it supposed to be the whole thing. It has the whole thing. It's, uh, the needs assessment, the strategic plan, as well as the capital facility plan. So that was for under 60 yeah. Yeah. And to look at the impact fees as well. We so looked, and we looked at that when we did when we looked at how much the other day when we voted right. to do the mm -hmm. 920 mm -hmm. right well, that should be included in that. Yes. In there, right? Right. The, the RFP yes does indicate that we want a capital. We're asking people that are capable of doing the capital facilities plan, but the range was uh, according to my group 50 to 65 thousand. So we'll hope it's at the lower end. But I on, on where we, we were looking at all of the equipment and how much it cost. Mm -hmm. but that's, that's not a one-time fee, right? That equipment, you got, you can't use it for 10, 15 years. Like, on a lot of that, how long can you use it? Is it a number of hours, or? And that varies on the PC equipment. You know, how long it lasts. Okay. So that's something that's kind of an ongoing cost. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, replacement cost is it's used on fire, too. Some of it. Absolutely. Is that it? Is some of that equipment the type of stuff that we use them on it and we should because we're trying to be budget conscious or and we're trying to get away from that? I'm serious. I mean, Can I speak to that? Yeah, yeah, please do. Please yeah, do. you're absolutely right, Manny, because, for example, a cardiac monitor is, um, we got a deal on this last one, it's $33,000. 
They recommend a seven year life on those. We have some that are 12, 15 years old. And so we should be rotating that if we're doing really what we should be. But right now it's not happening because we don't have the funds for it. See, and I think that's the same trap we got into with the fire engines. We said, well, yeah, it's 25 years old, but the wheels still roll. And then we get behind, and then, and it gives the public an idea of, well, we can just keep this uh, tax rate down forever, indefinitely. And then suddenly when we do the responsible thing of having a larger increase than what the public are used to, then they're saying, well, why didn't you do this all along? And so, I, think, I mean, we all know the situation. I think this is what the needs assessment will spell out. Well, and the strategic plan will improve to tell us what to do yeah. on an ongoing basis. Steve? May I make one more comment in relation to what you said um, in talking about these cardiac monitors? The cardiac monitors that we have, that we spent the 33000 on, that they tell you exactly, as you're doing CPR, they tell, exactly, tell you exactly how deep you should compress, if you're going too fast, if you're going too slow. So it's truly... Um, a life-saving piece of equipment, whereas the ones that we had prior to, you have no, none of that uh, information available to you. You know, like on those pieces of machine, like as we learn more, we say, okay, what we were doing 10 years ago, we're now going to adjust it because we're doing something different with compression or when we're breathing in the mouth and that sort of thing. So. If, if it has data like that, it might be updated, or do those things get updated over time? We have a contract yearly where they come and update them. Okay. Um, however, the older ones, they just don't, don't have the capability. They don't have the capability. Like the computer eventually it won't update. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was amazed. The one thing to learn that they had done away with the previous is compression now. And I suspect the new monitors just monitor that. Don't worry about it, because that's not what you do anymore. Well, that's the layperson. That's the layperson. Janet's correct. Once we arrive, um, we do the breathing. Yeah, yeah, well. you put on a bag. Yeah. Very one of the questions. Uh -huh. Did we review the time we get for the need assessment? We think that we would get this out by the end of October. Yes. Uh, we think that we could get uh, the submittals, the applicant submittals, back in 30 days. And then once we look, do that, we'll have our committee take a look and score and make a recommendation. So I think by the end of the year, we'd be ready to present with, to do. Uh, and then we could sign that, you could sign that contract then at the beginning of the next year. Um, but to get the needs assessment and the strategic plan back, we think would be about six months. I hope I hope a shorter time frame, but that's what I'm told. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Do you mind if I turn to today's business, the budget? Um, you have a, a important decision in front of you today, and we certainly want to make sure we meet all those deadlines that are required by the state. The um, amount that the advisory board had recommended was seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. I know you remember that. Um, the new uh, proposed budget. Uh, again, this was just a tentative budget. This is not ready to go out to the public. Um, the chief put this together just to, to indicate what he felt would be the shortfall if we didn't do a tax increase, and it came up to almost nine hundred twenty thousand um, dollars. We didn't have an opportunity at our advisory board to really discuss this because it came in at the very last minute, and we had all this other uh, stuff on our agenda, and we did look at it. Yeah, but we didn't make a recommendation. No one opposed anything that was on there. Uh, when I ma uh, made my questions to uh, present to the chief, uh, top of the list was um, the salaries and wages. Um, he is proposing five new full-time employees for the department. Uh, this just happens to coincide with the EMS uh, presentation that also says that they need five new full-time people. So uh, this is the direction that the advisory board wants to go anyway. So I hope that you will take that into consideration as you make your decision today. Um, our goal, the advisory board's goal is to go full-time for the valley. We just feel that Wasatch County needs full-time fire. Well 
trained full time, great equipment. And you know, every time I come to the, one of these meetings, I hear the rec board talk about all their wonderful events. I just throw, oh my gosh, do they realize the pressure that they're putting on EMS right now? I don't know that they do. That that is the first thing that jumps out at me. You know, I, I love that we're being successful, but every new thing that we add means another drain on the resources that we currently have. That, that's not even to mention the tourism and all the good oh, events right. they bring and the oh, recreation. And, and I mean, it is, it's such an impact and we don't see it, but these guys deal with it every, every day. single day. Every we're single day. Day. Yeah, compounding it every single day. And we have to do something about it. And so um, when you're looking at this budget increase of 920000 keep in mind that the $640,000 from the assessment that's no longer coming in is a huge portion of that, a huge portion of that. So that leaves, what, $280,000 that is actually an increase. Um, that's hardly excessive. So I hope that you will keep that in your mind. Um, and included in the budget, now, once again, um, I think I stood before you the last time I was here and said that we aren't going to recommend a budget that the advisory board hasn't looked at line by line. We're going to be asking for some more line items to take a look at um, different things. For instance, salaries and wages, we'd like to see that broken down into full-time, part-time, um, sick leave, paid leave, um, those kinds of things, overtime, for instance. Um, my one caveat about the uh, hiring new full-time people is that we don't have that merit system in place yet. Chief <coughs> assures me that we have a process, but I'm not sure that that up to the state standard and so I would love to, to keep that in mind maybe think about what you're doing with the sheriff's department should be also duplicated with with fire uh, there is a county code now this is complicated because as you already know it's a special service district and not county employees but anyway I'd like to see a more formal process so that we can be sure that everything is supported my advisory board is also talking to me about federal law. So, you know, keep these things in mind as we go down this road. A lot of upgrades are coming. We're going to have to uh, improve lots of different areas. But anyway, that's all that I have for you today. Is there any other question? Well, it's it's a fantastic group of people, and like I say, I'm the least educated, but I'm trying. It's like drinking out of that fire hose, and uh, so um, I am going to be checking into NFPA and learning about those things, and uh, hopefully next time I'm here in front of you, I'll have more information. In this if you do have any uh, questions or any areas that you want us to look at, please don't hesitate to tell me about it because that's what we're here for. Thanks. Appreciate Mary taking the time to do that. They have been a great help uh, along the lines of the RFP. Uh, all of you should have received. If you do have any input, and can get it to within the next three or four days. I know some advisory board has sent some uh, additions that we want to add to this, and so that we can get it finalized and uh, move it along. Uh, just uh, Chief, how are you going to determine those the people how to send this out and get the respondents? Well, I think there's some. Uh, great connections with the advisory board. I think they have, you know, the state fire chiefs, the National Fire Chiefs Association that we can send these out to. And uh, they have some great connections. I know several of the board members have uh, done these in the past. So I was just part of the original one that was done back in 04, 05 for the county. So it's been a great help to have them there. To and to steer you down the right road. I wouldn't think that there'd be many companies qualified to do this. You know, there's just a handful, I think, in the, I mean, a lot of them, you know, uh, that's their profession. That's what they do is put the fire service on these. So you probably send it specifically to them, those that you're aware of. But we don't want to handpick, but yeah, we're going to make well, sure you, those that you they're aware of. It's kind of like a pre-approved contract then yeah. those that meet the specification yeah. and then if anybody else takes it up they're welcome too but not why. Correct. 
Uh, I got a notice from uh, Pierce uh, Ladder Company that's uh, going to be completed on the 13th of November. Uh, it will actually be delivered here on the 20. I think it's the 27th. It's the weekend of Thanksgiving. I'm going to go back and get it and drive it home. Without any accidents, I shouldn't be here. But, uh, Where are you building? Where are you going to build it? It's in uh, Wisconsin, Appleton, Wisconsin. Where it's at. So they've been sending photographs of updates, and yeah, it's looking pretty sharp right now. So, so the, the, ladder, yes. the ladder we've got is 70 something feet, is that correct? 75, I believe. And then the new one is? 105. So, I hope they'll put a layout on the streets. And it's actually the, the, uh, the key with this and the reason we went with Pierce is it's a single axle. All that's on one single axle truck. And so, I mean, the maintenance is less, the weight's less. You have to pack. So it's uh, it's pretty impressive. Is that not how long we have to reach our calls for? Should be if we can get close enough. Well, not the same region, but they have a fire pump inside itself. So those type of structures are built that way too. Yeah. How much equipment are you going to have to add to it once you get it? Over 100. We're actually accumulating some of that now we have been over the last few weeks. So that when it's delivered, we're going to be able to load that on. Holes is the biggest thing out there that takes a long time. You know, come with ladders and hooks, pipe poles, that type of thing, but everything else, nozzles, holes, chainsaws, fans, Carbs, all that kind of stuff we'll have to equip with wise, everything that goes with them. So, yeah, it'll be well over $100,000. So, we're uh, hopefully we'll have most of that. I mean, like an air pack, I mean, this you seen when you went to 101s, $10,000. So, gotta have six of those, and that's 60000 just in a cell. It's expensive, but it's like Claire says, man, and it, it isn't like they last forever, they wear out. So, but anyway, just an update with that. And uh, that's all I have to report as far as the chief, unless you have questions. Yes, going to the next item then, is there, unless there's a question for the chief. No, you did a great job on the Fire 101. I know they came through the advisory board, but you recommended the advisory board. I'm very happy that you did that. I've been very pleased with what we've been seeing from the bar district this year. Good job, Marie. Let's, let's go back to the next item, the property, the property tax increase to, to the uh, state intent to increase property tax, the dollar amount, the purpose for the increase, and the property percentage of the increase. You want to lead us through that, Chief? Okay. Uh, as you looked at my budget, the, uh, and I know it's a sizable increase, but as Mary stated earlier, uh, $640,000 is out of the assessment area. And, uh, if you actually look down through here and look, I know when I prepared this uh, with my CPA, uh, the first thing that jumped out at me was uh, salary and wages. And, uh, and may have done some of you, and I just want to explain some of that through is 66% uh, of the assessment in our wages was paid by the Jordan Mail, and that's part of this because what really caught my eyes is it was 48% of normal. I can't be right, this for five new employees. And uh, so then we researched, and that was the reason why it's. Uh, that was picked up by the Jordan Mail assessment. And that kind of trickles down through, as you see through the payroll tax, workers' comp. Uh, if you actually get down to uh, apparatus replacement, in the past we've had 300,000 in there that we've budgeted for. And that's the reason we was able to pay for the ladder truck, is we've had that in, in an account. And as you can see there, I've raised that I actually had that at uh, 500000 and took the 65000 on the needs assessment study out of that. 
because this needs assessment study will be a one-time shot for at least five to ten years. And uh, that uh, 65 I would like to put back into that apparatus replacement in 19, 2019 budget. The 300 wasn't getting us there. I mean, we were still falling behind us. You all know, I mean, this ladder's going to be well over a million dollars. I mean, pumpers are a half a million, and we just wasn't catching it. And that's why uh, I would propose that to go back in there to get 500. At least that way, we're able to at least buy a pumper every year. And if you actually look at the stations, I mean, that's not even getting a backup, but if we can use some of these older ones for a backup. I don't know how many of you know, but the Jordan L pumper's been out of service for well over five months. We just barely got it back. So we, we bust one down, we just don't have a lot of backup to actually do it. So it's good to have a few of them in reserve. But uh, uh, working through this list, uh, I want to make sure I touch on uh, Uh, tax on the property current year. Let me make sure I'm on the right one. Did we pass in council last week? Intent to increase as a five board. Mm -hmm. We've done that. And the dollar amount of increase is the, I think the council, when I was before them, was 920. We did not to exceed 920. Could be very that well. Was the low. Not to exceed 920. Date, time, place of the public hearing. Uh, I would like to have that on the December's meeting, which I believe is the 14th. Say that again. Christmas. On my budget hearing. For the. What date did you say again? Or did you? The 14th. Uh, 12th of December. And that'll be our regular scheduled fire board meeting and we'll have a public hearing. It'd have to be at six, correct? Pardon? It'd have to be at six. Yes. Yeah. 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 And the purpose for the increase is uh, to hire some new employees and uh, deficit of the assessment area. Revenue loss. The actual approximate percentage nearest Brent could come up with was about 48.2% on the 920. So, with that, I guess I'd entertain any questions. That's 48.2 percent on the increase of the county. What percentage of the county brought to different? Should we? Do you want to make? Do we need a motion that covers those, including the time and date, and sets the time and date now? Do you, I would say yes. Because he has to have time That's to advertise I, it, so we I'm need to get saying. it out there. That date has to go in the letter that goes out the end of October. Right? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, I thought we had to have two tree taxation hearings. Well, we send up, we have one. The letter of intent, the actually the October 31st that goes out with your tax notices. Mm -hmm. But don't we have to have a hearing with that, a public hearing? Not according to the state. I'm looking, I can put it on the board of what. Okay. 